So the last gentleman talked a little bit about uh, packaging apps up for your phone. And the whole point of this is to introduce you to lots of ideas, lots of possibilities for things that you might be able to do at Hackathon next month. So it would be rude of me not to mention that there is an app running on my phone that if you go to buzz.meteor.com, you can press a button there. But I mean, you should read the note and you shouldn't press it. But if anyone does, then it has this really pleasing effect of making my leg vibrate. Uh, which is super irritating. And when I demoed this last year, uh, it was really tedious because everyone thought it was really funny to ignore the message that clearly says, do not press. <laughs> and what they, what they did was, they pressed it. And I couldn't, I, I mean, I couldn't sleep. That's not, I mean, that's not funny, is it? It says, do not press. Now, look at you all. <laughs> this is, this is anarchy. What if, it, it, no one cares about the rules. All right. <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, you're all pressing the buttons and the button is making my phone vibrate. That is done through the magic of Meteor. Uh, so, when you press a button, a buzz is going into a collection. I'm recording your IP address, so I know who you are. <laughs> uh, and, the act and then I've got a, uh, an auto run. I've got a collection observer that whenever a new buzz is inserted into that collection, the Meteor does its job and it synchronizes my uh, mobile phone apps collection of buzzes, and when it sees a new one, it triggers a vibrate. Now, when we're building websites, we can't normally vibrate things, but the magic of Cordova means I can just uh, Meteor add Cordova package, and there is a Cordova package for vibration. So it was a really simple process of make a collection, uh, make something observe that collection, and then install the JavaScript API that knows how to talk to your phone's vibration uh, system. Uh, so the code is on GitHub, and as per usual, uh, there's a Meteor London slash buzz, and if you want to do anything with Vibration or Cordova, that is a very minimal app. As you can see, there's not a lot to it. Uh, yeah, does, does, yeah, look at that, 43 lines. <laughs> the battle of who can write the least code. Uh, somewhere in Meteor, I think it says, uh, there's a file with Cordova plugins, and the only one in there is the org Apache Cordova. You're still pressing the button. It's, clear, it's really clear, do not press it. You cheeky scallywags. OK, uh, so that's Buzz. But that's, not, that's not my talk. <laughs> um, that was the preamble to my talk. Sorry, sorry. So what happened was, right, a couple of things, couple, a confluence of events. Because uh, I'm really hip, I started listening to Jamie XX. I don't know if any of you have heard of him, but he's going to be massive, right? <laughs> uh, so what happened? Well, I heard this track. Let's I mean, it's sort of background material. This track, and it basically changed my life because what it did was remind me that I had a childhood once, and that childhood wasn't anything like this. <laughs> it was a lot darker, and there was much bigger speakers. Um, but I saw, what I did see was this thing, this lovely little, little thing. And then I saw Chris Waring tweet about how he feels he should learn more about SVG, and I was like, I'm not going to fall behind Chris Waring. I need to learn about SVGs as well, because last time I tried, I made a big hairy mess. Uh, I tried to do like a fundraising thermometer for Meteor, because uh, they were doing a big like awareness campaign. And it was a beautiful design that a friend of ours came up with. And I thought what would be neat would be to like implement it, um, implement it as an SVG, and then make the SVG animate to show that they're like, the likes were filling up. Anyway, I made a mess, and I realized that SVGs were way harder than I thought they were, and I gave up, and I just did it in CSS instead. Because <laughs> CSS is easy, and SVGs are hard. But nowadays, people have shiny retina screens. So like, I saw this thing, and I was like, how hard can that be as an SVG? It's a bunch of straight lines. Now, in the olden days, I would have gone straight to JS bin, because in my head, like everything begins with JS bin. When, I, when I'm just trying to like figure out how to build like a rough idea and I don't really know where I'm going with it, I need that immediate feedback. But in this, uh, having spent some time with Chris, I was like, maybe there's a better way. So what, so what I did is I fired up Sketch instead. And I did this. And I was like, well, it's basically, it's basically that, isn't it? Like you can see the similarities immediately between this and this. Basically, <laughs> basically the same. So, I mean, the overriding, the, the important thing about this talk is Alan showed you lots of very exciting demos, and I want to de demystify any sense that you might have that we're actually good at this. 
and just, just like reassure you that we're all, we can all do this. So I was like, how, is he, like, how would you programmatically draw that shape? Right. I'm going to keep that shape. Got it burned into your retinas. How would you do that? So I'd, in Sketch, I was like, well, maybe I'd like draw a square, and then I'd draw another square, and I'd rotate them by some known amount, and then maybe that would work. And I was, uh, you know, sort of, and I was like, yeah, sort of that. I drew it. I drew like one little bit, and I was like, yeah, I'm happy with that. It looks like it's going to be amazing. So then I was like, well, how hard can that be to do in CSS? So as you can see, this was my first attempt on the 28th of August. Pretty good. <laughs> Pret pretty good. Pretty good. The best thing about uh, JSBin is you can see how terrible you are over time. Snapshot two, nothing. Nothing doing. Snapshot three. Yep, pretty good. Oh, uh, oh, snapshot three. We've made a lot of progress between snapshot two and three. What's happened? Well, but let's, let's dig in. Snapshot, oh, where are we? Snapshot three, snapshot, snapshot three. Da -na 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 -na. JS bin man. Oh, oh no, snapshot three is not good. Terrible. Oh, ooh. Let's try four. Da -da -na 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 -na. Oh, four's interesting. Five, what have we got? Oh, that's good. Don't feel like it's reloading. Ooh, let's go, let's do it. Ah, run with you. let's try that. Ah, okay, I just wasn't running, also run. Very important. Uh, so let's dig in a little bit to what this guy's doing. So I'm, you can see I'm getting quite close here, and I'm getting a bit cocky, and I'm like, yes, this, I was right, it's really easy. Uh, so what, what I was doing was basically drawing rectangles. So I've got like three rectangles over here on the left-hand side. Uh, if you don't know SVG, don't learn it from me. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, it's like HTML, but, with, but worse. That's, uh, so you've got a view box. Uh, that is like, that's where we translate kind of pixel coordinates into some ethereal Cartesian plane of madness. So you like, because width there means 400 pixels. But 50, the minus 50 and the minus 50 is like, start the X and Y coordinate system in the madness box that follows. And 100 and 100 is, it's 100 mysterious units wide. Um, it doesn't correspond to any human distance measurement. Uh, so that's your, that's your first caveat. Um, and like, so the minus 50, minus 50, 100, 100 is like the first evidence. Like it's the big warning sign across the cave entrance that is like madness this way. So I, actually what was happening was it wasn't all jealousy of Chris Waring. I was watching uh, Anna Tudor's the Baby Dino did a load of um, um, SVG tutorial articles recently, and I'll put links to them because they're amazing. Like she, you know, she she goes through the science of it, and it's really interesting. I'm just, you know, padding for time. Uh, but so you can see, it's quite simple. You do a rect, you get a rect um, rectangle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And so I took, I took me, I took me a literal handwritten artisanal small batch HTML, and I plumbed it into a string, and did some JavaScript on it. So you know, there's no magic. So then the trick, what, what, what we see here is a rectangle, and then another rectangle rotated by about 15 degrees. Then another rotate, like so they're layering up rectangles. Each one is rotated by another 15 degrees. So I got that working. I thought I was pretty clever. Uh, so you can see there's my 15, 15 steps. So if I change that to be like 30 and rerun it, you can see the, the angle is getting larger. So that's the rotation amount that's being applied. So you can see here, so we're putting that on a transform uh, attribute to the rectangle. So that's just getting pumped in. Uh, so if we go to like 90, things start to get pretty dull. Uh, and if we go to like 1, things get a little bit crazy. Uh, yep, 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 seven, eight, yeah, 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 shut up. Uh, so the big problem with this was I thought I'd solved it, but of course, if you just fan out a series of squares, they have a stacking order. And so you're always left with this stupid bloody square. <laughs> so I was like, this is rubbish. So then I tried to do triangles, and then you, you're on your own then. <laughs> uh, you've, got, you've got circles. And you've got rectangles. <laughs> After that, you've got paths and polygons. <laughs> well, well, did, I mean, the adventure continues. Where did I get to? Nine, 
<laughs> oh, that's, that's way ahead. Oh, oh, giving the game away. Not as rubbish as he pretends to be. Oh, that's another thing. Seven. This is madness. Gears of madness. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's in here somewhere. There it is. Let's try this one. Ah, so rushing ahead. Uh, I got lost along the way. I couldn't make I couldn't make rectangles make the cover of the album. So what I did instead was just get like I stayed awake all night and <laughs> and this came out. And I was like, well, that's, that's that's not bad. It's pretty wild. Yeah, there we go. Anyway. Uh, so then what I thought I'd do was I turn that into a meteor app instead. Uh, so what have I got? A crashing meteor app. Well, that's pretty normal. Uh, meteor. So I got this rainbow thing here. And it's really just, it's the same rectangle code, but then I realized that what I'd accidentally done was made a, an SVG and a little bit of code that repeated something and rotated it and changed the colors. And there is no way you can make it not amazing. It's really good. So if I do say so myself, uh, log a lost 3000. So that, as a starting point, I was happy with. I was like, I could be a designer. Uh, and then I was like, well, how, what, what if we, like, way, 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 way. it's pretty good. Oh, this is just me, this is just me making noises now. Um, so this all looks pretty fancy. Da -da 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 -da. Well, it's brought to you by the reactive power of Meteor. So these are just two range inputs. So basically all I've done is I noodled around with JSBin until I got something I liked. And then I've copied and pasted my JSBin code into, into this very simple Meteor app. So you can see we've got like your super simple, this is it, this is all the HTML. So we've got an SVG. JavaScript is gonna insert uh, some rectangles into that and some controls and control X and control Y. These would be significant in a moment. Uh, so here, there's some fairly familiar looking code by now. And lots of linter errors because whatever. Uh, so <laughs> so <laughs> what, what I found was uh, if you make your variable name short enough and you stay awake long enough, magic happens. So I made my variable names as short as I could and then I've now mapped them to session variables. And when they are red, so it basically we've got like the width of the rectangle is W, the height of the rectangle is H, the starting X position is X, the starting Y position is Y. <coughs> then the uh, rotation is applied. So I tried to do some maths, numbers came out, it was great. Uh, and da, 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 da. So, so the kind of key magic is we make a rectangle with a kind of x, y coordinate for its top left corner, uh, and it's got a width and a height, and it's got a rotation. And then we just do that many, many times over. So it's all in the repetition. This list of, this list of colors, I literally went and manually color picked every, <laughs> every one. Uh, I was at work. So when, when Alan says it's his company, he, he means that, because I was doing this. <laughs> Uh, but I was, it was Chris's birthday, and I was like, I've got to get it finished. Uh, and I didn't, but this is sort of a love letter slash lightning talk. Um, so what I'm trying to get to is, right, now we've got those variables, and instead of being hard-coded, they are being extracted from the Meteor session object. So if you've never used Meteor, in the client side, you have a session object. And it's a place that you can store any uh, variables that you want. And it is now a reactive var. So you can store other things, but what's interesting about the session is it will survive hot code reloads. So Meteor has many tricks up its sleeve. One of them is hot code reloading, which means that if you make an edit to your app and, and deploy it, your, your active users, wherever possible, they will get the new version of the app uh, <laughs> folded into their current session. But if you've got some, some variables that aren't in the session, they will basically get erased and the user will kind of be kicked back to step one and have to carry on. But if you put it in the session, it will survive that. So there's that. Plus, the session is reactive. So when I change the value of W in the session, Meteor's reactivity will kick in. And any code that's using it, as long as it's wrapped in an auto run, will re-render. So we can see here we're getting the values. We can see here we're setting some interesting defaults. And way down here, we are 
da, 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 da. Right, we're setting them. So I'm just listening for a change event on some range inputs, and I grab the ID of it. So X is gonna the ID X is gonna set the session var X, and the ID Y is gonna set the session var Y. Da, 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 da. Comes out. So I so I listen on a I listen on the template for change events. I know the change events are only going to be generated by these two inputs. So I unpack the event, get the ID out. That's the session var I'm going to set. And then I get the value of this current range slider. This is using fancy HTML5 range input types, but it works. So that's rad. Uh, and what you're left with is, is, is that thing. Is that thing. Whoop, 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 whoop. It's pretty good. And you can, you know, with range sliders, they, they get keyboard by default. So they're keyboard responses. Ding, 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 so that's kind of fun. Uh, da, 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 da. So if you want to play with it yourself, you can go to rainbow.medior.com and you can listen to Gosh all you like, and eventually it'll render. We're going to do this audio input convert to waveform. Yeah. Change those, rate, those sliders automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be perfect. Yeah, it'd be crazy. Listen to Chris. It'd be crazy. Uh, Chris has a much more interesting audio demo. Um, but for the grand finale, uh, I will finish up now. So if you're interested in SVG, just play with them. But play with them in some tool that makes them reactive. So you can see the result of your change. So I use JSBin to prototype out just the, the rough JavaScript to see the idea. And in doing that, I was able to like, fine tune it very quickly. Because as soon as I change a number, I saw the effect of the change. So I didn't have to do any maths. That's the trick here. I just called functions that sounded like they were mathematical <laughs> and I looked at the results and I'm very good at like responding to, to, to stimulus because I'm a living creature so when I see a stimulus I'm like oh I like that and then I just sort of iterate until I find something that is mind-blowingly good and then normally I don't tell anyone how I did it and they think I'm clever <laughs> uh, Rainbow I really 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 I'm gonna stop talking in a minute I really really want to show you guys Chris's birthday present. So where is it? Uh, uh, how does this work? HTTP server? Yeah. It's not even a thing. Address in use. Yeah. One of you guys. Oh, that's it. Da 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 da. Okay. So the big the big reveal is I figured it out. Figured it out. Of course I did bloody pro, uh, but I'm also bloody stubborn, uh, so